So we're uh, prepping some chickens now for our smoked chicken, rice, and yuzu kosho dish. In Texas barbecue, you know, you'll know you find brisket and ribs. A lot of places will do turkey or chicken. We have chicken rice as a street food in Asia. And so that's where the idea for us came from is to smoke chickens, but use it in a chicken rice dish that we kind of ate growing up that our mom cooked. So what we're doing here is kind of uh, spatchcocking the chicken because when it lays on the smoker, it's gonna lay nice and flat on the smoker like that. The second component of the chicken rice dish is yuzu kosho. Yuzu kosho, which is a uh, Japanese sort of fermented chili, citrus uh, dressing that has you know lime and lemon zest, garlic, and, and some oil. Today we're doing a dry brine, pretty basic salt, and leave it there for um, two, three hours. A lot of the flavor is going to come from the chicken fat and then the smoke. This chicken dish will be fortified by the rice. The rice has a ton of a flavor in it. It has some chicken rendered chicken fat in there. It has garlic, gingers. This dish has been really popular for us. We uh, did it for the first time kind of experimentally for a barbecue competition. We ended up winning the whole Texas barbecue competition with the chicken dish, which was pretty funny because Texas is a beef state. This is our Vietnamese coffee. This is how we get started. The fuel to the, uh, the cook is uh, in this little cup right here. Um, so we do pop-ups. Usually when we do pop-ups, it's at a brewery. We'll cook everything here. We'll put them in coolers, kind of have our tables, our tent and stuff, and kind of move everything to the brewery. Right now we're trying to build a bed of coals. Yeah, we're using a post oak because it's the most uh, ubiquitous wood uh, in Texas. Uh, it has a mild flavor. We really like it because it lets uh, the meat kind of shine through. Uh, during the cook, we aim to have the smoker, the internal temps around uh, 225. Um, I'd say our fire is pretty consistent with this sort of new school barbecue. The biggest difference between kind of this new school style is just running it really low, really slow. In old school, it's kind of hot and fast. Uh, we're cooking in the, the front yard. The first week, everybody thought their homes were on fire. Uh, but now everybody's used to, uh, to us doing this. Uh, once in a while, you just gotta give your neighbors some brisket and some ribs and everybody has uh, tended to stay quiet and no complaints so far, knock on wood. We're about to trim some briskets. We got some briskets from 44 Farms. Their steers are grain fed. They treat their animals ethically and we think that creates a better product. I think the main goal for us is to make it as aerodynamic as possible because we're using offset smokers. The smoke comes laterally, so side to side. And if you play Super Mario, uh, it's kind of like those torpedoes, right? It's kind of like round on one end and kind of it flattens out on the other. And that's kind of the shape that you want. Beef is pretty prevalent in uh, Vietnamese cooking. I think that's a function of the, the French influence. Uh, Vietnamese food in itself is more vegetable based, a lot of soup, steaming. The red meat consumption definitely increased with uh, the French. And now we're gonna build the rub. It's gonna be salt and pepper. The thing is we use uh, kosher salt, but this pepper is from Phu Quoc. It's an island in southern Vietnam. The seasonings are there to kind of help accentuate the meat's flavor, um, to not overpower it. So you don't want too much, it's kind of, for us, this, this coating is, is, is perfect. And one of the dishes that we're using, uh, the brisket for today, is pho. Um, now we're gonna make some uh, pho broth to go with, with our brisket pho. This is fennel, cilantro seeds, and then this is a star anise. It kind of adds like a sweet, tangy sort of notes, cinnamon. These guys here are uh, black cardamom. So this is kind of what gives the pho broth its flavor. So we'll tie the back here. Um, it's kind of like a slow release into the broth. The broth takes about four or five hours to make. Pop it in, and then the last part, we'll put the chicken on. Uh, we like to use a chicken broth in our brisket pho because you know brisket is really heavy, fatty, and so we think it balances out nicely with a, a light stock. Uh, these beef ribs have already smoked for about 12 hours, so we use these bones because they already have a lot of smoke infusing them. And that's what we want in the, the pho broth as well, it's kind of smoky flavor. So now we kind of just let time do its thing. Um, we'll wash the smoker, make sure the briskets are being cooked. We can just let the broth do its thing. 
Vietnamese food in Texas barbecue go together so well is uh, they're kind of diametrically opposite. You know, Vietnamese food is a lot of soups, steamed stuff, lots of herbs, everything's light and fresh. Uh, Texas barbecue is savory, delicious, fatty, and so it's kind of like the yin and the yang of, uh, you know, you have something really heavy, really light that kind of balance each other out. So these are the uh, beef short ribs, so like kind of the dino ribs from the short plate of the, the cow. So what we're going to do right now is we're trimming them. Ultimately, we'll use the, uh, the finished product for our Calbi beef rib nigiri. We really like this dish because, you know, we grew up in Houston. Houston's really diverse, and so we ate a lot of Korean barbecue growing up, and so that's an inspiration for this dish. For the Korean barbecue, um, the kalbi is just grilled for a few seconds on the table, and then you eat it. But what we're looking for is imparting a smokiness. So instead of a few seconds on the grill, we're smoking these short ribs for 12 to 14 hours. My brother Theo, who is the other half of Koi, uh, will be helping us make the um, Korean kalbi uh, marinade. So we got some orange juice, garlic. So I'm just gonna skin down the Asian pear real quick. Kalbi is a uh, soy, garlic, and sugar-based marinade, but here we're doing a little twist uh, by throwing it on our beef ribs. It's like Texas barbecue, the trinity is, you know, brisket, pork ribs, and sausage. I think Kalbi in Korean barbecue is probably like the brisket, right? It's like, yeah, you yeah. can't have a Korean barbecue without Kalbi. Right? Growing up in Texas, in Houston especially, where there's a ton of uh, Vietnamese, Chinese, Indian people, Korean, Japanese, Pakistani, um, has a huge influence on how we cook and what we cook because when we cook with koi, we ask ourselves like, what dishes can we kind of riff on that brings us sort of nostalgia? Uh, stuff like we ate growing up as kids, right? Like brisket pho. We ate brisket growing up, we ate pho growing up. How do we combine those two dishes in a way that is fluid, and cohesive and, and fun and most importantly delicious to eat. The sausage we're making today is called uh, bala lok, really traditional Vietnamese dish that involves la lok leaves. It's kind of like a beetle leaf, the cousin of a beetle leaf, kind of medicinally. Traditionally, bala lok dish is ground beef seasoned um, and then you wrap the la lok leaves around the beef into like little ovals and then you, uh, you grill them. So these are the brisket trimmings that we are going to repurpose into sausage. What we do is we take the lalo leaves, we dice them finely, we take some, we stick it in the fire box to kind of honor that direct fire tradition, um, and then we kind of mix it all into um, the sausage meat. The barbecue community has been great. Even though you know we do this part time, we've met a lot of good friends, like our friend here, uh, um, Brian Bingham. He's helping us out with the sausage right now. Growing up, I was really embarrassed to bring my friends over. My mom was cooking with fish sauce. You know, um, we had pickled cabbage and stuff, and it smelled kind of funky. And I was like, Oh my God, my friends are gonna like you know make fun of me. But now it's been great to embrace it. And um, so when people you know come to our pop ups, they might be like, Oh, what is that red stuff? Oh, it's kimchi. And then ten minutes later, they're like, Can I have some more? Right? That that all always brings a smile to my face. Putting people out of their comfort zone, but then making it accessible through barbecue and then surprising them and then they end up liking it. Um, so we were making bong bao hue. So the stock is comprised of you know femur bones. These are really great because they have marrow in it and which we'll use to thicken up the stock. Um, we have some beautiful uh, chuck that we'll use and then we'll have some oxtail as well, which is really nice because it's, um, it's a tougher cut, but once you kind of boil it and cook it for five, six hours, it becomes extremely tender and, and really flavorful. So we're gonna take all these uh, three components and add it to the broth. I'm from Da Nang, my hometown is uh, from Da Nang in the central Vietnam. And uh, a city that's next to us is called Hue, it was the old imperial capital and they're known for a spicy noodle dish called Bung Bao Hue. And that's that, so um, we'll leave this here. Once it boils, um, all the impurities will come out uh, for the next couple of hours. We can just let the broth do its thing. Viet Tex uh, means a few different things. It's just a, a term that we thought encapsulates our identity, right? We're Vietnamese Americans that grew up in Texas, it's as simple as that. But it's also the type of food that we, we like to do. Um, you know, we love traditional Vietnamese food. We love traditional Texas barbecue. It's kind of what started uh, the essence of Koi, right? Uh, Central Texas barbecue 
a with an Asian influence. So it's just the connection between our kind of cultural heritage of being from Vietnam. Our parents were from Vietnam. You know, we speak Vietnamese, we eat Vietnamese food, but we we're also Texan. So it's kind of that duality of our identity and also the food that we want to put out. Khoi or Khoi, how you pronounce in Vietnamese, means smoke. So that's where we got our inspiration because we want to cook with smoke, cook with indirect fire, indirect heat. The word that represents what we do is try to infuse smoke in Vietnamese dishes, in American dishes, in Chinese, Japanese, whatever the dish we do, we think about how to incorporate um, smoke as a flavor. If you put you know, two different cultures together, something great can happen. And I think uh, in this day and age with a lot of you know, um, divisiveness that you know, two different opposing sides, you don't think that might go together necessarily, but when you do it in a thoughtful manner, um, you know, it could work and that you know, we, should, we should celebrate that. Mm -hmm.